Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about futures contracts and how they affect crypto and just markets in general. If you like this kind of content, you should definitely like, comment and subscribe and stay till the end of this video so you can absorb the gist of everything that I'm about to tell you. But I need you to remember this is not financial advice. We do not accept liabilities for losses that you might incur and everything here is strictly for research and use purposes. So with that in mind, you should be able to enjoy the subject of this video. So futures. Do we love them? Do we hate them? Bit of both. Futures are basically this. Futures are a derivative financial contract that obligates the party to tr transact an asset at a predetermined future date and price. The buyer, must, the buyer must purchase or the seller must sell the underlying asset at the set price regardless of the current market price on the expiration date. Now, more or less what it's telling you is that let's say um, the price of the price of sponges are a dollar. One guy thinks that the prices of sponges will go up to two dollars because he's like, there's a shortage of sponge. Then one guy thinks, nah, it's going to go to 50 cents because I think that there's an excess of sponge, for example, or there's going to be like a huge surplus coming soon. These two people will basically make a bet on a contract stating more or less what their what their price points are when when they think that uh, those things are going to basically those events are going to transpire. And then it's set by a certain date in the contract. So let's say they think it'll happen within a year. So from a year from this point, November 15th in a year, by then the contract will expire and you will know if you either won or you lost. It's basically gambling. And you could exit a position at any point. So if you see your positions up, you could exit and people will be basically forced to buy sponges at the higher price. Or the alternative is if you sell, they'll be forced to sell sponges at a lower price. So the whole concept is that you're basically gambling on what the prices are going to be in the future. Now, that's more or less how a CME future works. It's all based off of uh, time constraints. But I'm going to focus a little bit more today on perpetual contracts. Now, perpetual contracts are different from the standard one. The standard one is based off of uh, timelines and uh, basically based off of timelines, like preset dates and prices, right? So that's, that, that, that's, that's how it's based. Whereas a perpetual contract is strictly based off of price and liquidation prices. Now, how does that work? Well, a perpetual contract just means that it's constantly running, meaning that you could leave the contract open forever, technically, if you really wanted to. You don't ever have to take it out. But, you know, like, it's not worth it to ever just leave it in because you, get, it, it, you, you have to pay a funding rate. But we'll, we'll get into that in a second. So imagine what a perpetual contract is. Let's look at, the, let's look at Bitcoin. Perfect example of a perpetual contract because this is how a lot of market delays and market drops happen. It's due to Bitcoin. So let's say the price of Bitcoin is at 60,000. Right now, all the bulls are going long. They're going to get extremely excited because like the price, the price is going to go up. So they're like, we're going to bet on high leverage because leverage is a whole other thing. And that's what makes futures contracts so intense is that you could leverage them. And like the standard leverage of a, of a regular futures contract will usually be about like, I think two to five, depending on what plat, like depending on what platform or regulated exchange you use. Whereas like a crypto contract could have leverage up to a hundred X. Now a hundred X is obviously gambling because you'll just lose your money. You're not going to win on a hundred X. It's not possible, but bear with me. So one person bets the price of Bitcoin is going up from 60,000. One person bets the price going down from 60,000. Let's just say they're going on 10x leverage. That means for every dollar they put in, they're getting 10 times their leverage. Or if they go 100 times leverage, it's 100 times their leverage. So a dollar is worth 100. So you're thinking, well, how does that make any sense? Well, I'm about to explain it. So instead of you having to uh, look at this contract based off of a set date of it expiring, you're actually going to have your contract expire by a set price. So if you have a lower leverage, your liquidation price, the price in which you lose money, goes down. 
like it becomes small it becomes like uh less close and if you go higher leverage it's like right around the corner so for example the guy who's 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 going along let's say he decides to go in at uh, 100x leverage at sixty thousand uh, dollars his liquidation price would be about probably fifty nine thousand or fifty eight thousand five hundred which is very small you're thinking, oh, $1,500, that's big. Not for Bitcoin. Bitcoin, you could see five to $10,000 be wiped off the price in like 20 minutes because it only takes $100 million to move Bitcoin 1%. And when it takes that little to move something 1%, a 1% movement is more than enough to knock someone out on a high leverage. So very risky business to be trading on high leverage. Now, the opposite example would be uh, shorting. So now the guy, let's say now, he's betting the price of Bitcoin is going to go down. So he shorts on a lower leverage, for example, like 10x. His liquidation price might be like 70,000. 70, so in order for him to lose all his money, he would have to have the price of Bitcoin hit 70,000. And then he would lose his money. Unless he decides to take a margin call which means he adds money to the position to save himself. But that's risky business. Margin calls can be very costly if you end up on the wrong end of a trade on either side. Now, the reason that's important is because liquidation prices are going to tell you, like, what are the chances you'll survive if there's a market dump? And most of the time when you see Bitcoin dumping like $5,000 in a few minutes, it's usually because there's too many people going long or short on a low leverage or on a high leverage, excuse me. So imagine you have all these guys, they're gambling, they're like, oh, Bitcoin's gonna go up and all the technicals and everything makes sense, so it's gonna go. But then the whales see like, yo, the guy's doing, let's say 50X or 100X and he's put in 10, 20, $30,000. Can't have the price of Bitcoin go from 60 to 65K because he'll make millions on that, millions. And you can't be paying out everyone that much. Does it make sense? Otherwise, everyone's going to get rich and buy all the Bitcoin. And they can't have that because they want to have a certain amount of Bitcoin in flow. They need to have the market running a certain way. And if everyone goes high leverage at one point, A, it's an overcrowded trade, but also B, if it makes that move, everyone's going to get rich. So whales, banks, all these people, they coordinate together to drop markets on these over leveraged traders to knock them out before the next leg goes up. So when you're looking at a Bitcoin chart and you see a wick go like that, everyone on that wick is finished. They all got their money taken from them. And, you know, that's painful. That's a painful thing to watch. But I don't really feel bad for leverage junkies. Leverage junkies, when they get knocked out, it's their business. You don't go high leverage unless you're into gambling. If you like to gamble, that's your business. But I will say this is gambling. Now, on these perpetual contracts, more or less what you're going to see is that, like I said, it's based off a of price action and it's gained by percentage. So it's like as the price of Bitcoin goes up, if you're going long or the price of Bitcoin goes down, if you're going short, you're going to gain money based off a of percentage. So let's say the price moves 1%. You're going to get basically, um, you're going to basically get that you're basically going to get your money multi uh, multiplied by the percentage by the multiplier. And it's kind of hard for me to explain it, I guess, better because it's just like a weird explanation on how the actual gains go parabolic. But they do. So it's like you put in 100 bucks trading on uh, 10 leverage, 10x leverage. It's still pretty high leverage, but it's low compared to other people what they put on their leverage. And it's like you're trading with a thousand bucks. So every time you move 1%, you're basically gaining uh, 10 bucks. So it's like, it's a mathematical equation and it goes both ways because when you go long or short, it's the same mathematical principle. It's just one goes up when it goes down and one goes up when it goes up. And what you'll see, generally speaking, is when you're going on uh, glass nodes and you're looking for uh, volume, futures volume and liquidation, right? You'll always see that the people going long are the ones who get liquidated the most. So those are usually amateur traders and speculators 
trying to leverage their positions while Bitcoin's going up on a high leverage. And like I said before, when a trade gets overcrowded, there's always going to be a coordinated group to knock you out. And anyone who thinks that these markets are not coordinated, you're living in the dark. You're living in the dark. That's straight up what it is. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, most decisions are going to be made behind the scenes. By the time it gets into the news, it's already happened. And if you think otherwise, you know what, you're going to be late for every trade and I wish you good luck on your journey because it's not going to be a good one. <laughs> so maybe that's a, you know, an asshole thing to say, but I'm telling you that because it has to be said. You know, the whole point is you want to be catching things before they're happening. You need to understand what the market wants to do to you before it does it to you. Because if, you know, Bitcoin's going up, 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 and everyone's got that hopium and they're like, yeah, keep putting, keep, keep going long, keep putting futures... Yo, one dude's going to be like, look how, look at all this hopium. Let's drop the market. And then when they drop the market, one of two things is going to happen. Either the fear and greed index is going to reset or people's greed is going to be so heavy that they're going to go long one more time on a high leverage. And then in which case you'll see another long wick that'll go down, bing, and just fucking take the rest of their money from them. And then the people who went short are going to be laughing and the people that went long are going to be crying. Bitcoin's a scam. It's like, well... You played with forces that you didn't understand. The way Bitcoin's designed mathematically with their supply is that you cannot attempt to over leverage yourself on futures. It's just not smart because at any second it could be taken. And a while ago we saw that dump where Bitcoin dropped from 64K to like 30. It was just two big wicks, one, two. All that were people's positions getting knocked out on futures contracts. All those people lost their money. And more or less, what you'll see there is that futures can become a trap if you dedicate yourself too deep into a contract. Meaning that like, if you keep taking margin calls and putting more and more money in, it's like, it's like, it's like a coal fire pit. You're throwing all the coal to keep the fire going, but like, yo, it's coal. It's not good for you. You know, and that's basically what you're doing. Futures are like a money pit if you're on a high leverage. If you're on a low leverage, like three, five, like six, seven X, like those are lower leverages in terms of crypto. You won't be so bad. Like your liquidation price will be like big enough where it's like, okay, you could survive like a five to 10 K drop, which is where most people are going to get knocked out permanently. And, you know, the way I see it is if you don't understand futures, don't play them. That's my biggest recommendation to you. In fact, the second I start teaching people on a personal level, the first thing I tell them is stay the fuck away from futures unless you want to get your money ripped out of your hands. Talk to a financial advisor, not me, because I'm not a financial advisor, and this isn't financial advice. But if you want to play futures and you want to do those kinds of things, talk to someone who knows better. Talk to the pretty girl that was on this channel at one point. And I'm talking to you, alien one. Because I know that you're in the, you know you're you're waiting in those comment sections for me, and I'm giving you another shout out because you made me laugh on the live stream. But all this to say is that futures are dangerous, and the whole basis of it is you're gambling on the price going up or down. So it really is gambling. And the thing is, is that it technically, when you create a futures market, you're actually creating extra shares of something, because you're not just taking the shares, you're also taking uh, the future shares in the, uh, of what's happening. So it's like, let's say there's 100 shares of something now and you're betting on shares in the future, technically you're adding those future shares to the pile of total shares that are possible because you're betting on shares that don't necessarily even exist. So futures are a very, they're a very ugly thing. Like in terms of how markets actually roll, I think futures do more damage to general markets than they do good. You know, like there's a lot of people, they, they like to play futures because it's like free money and everyone's having fun with it. But like, yo, what do you learn about easy money? Easy come, easy go. And easy money has a tendency of making money harder in the future. Because easy money, you look at how money's being printed right now. Now it's starting to get hard in terms of like how people are, are seeing their value drop. You know, and the thing is, is the futures markets are too coordinated against the people. It's not like they're in our favor. They're really not. There's no consumer protection for a crypto futures market. 
and there's even the consumer protection that they have for a regular future market. Good luck, because if a hedge fund is shorting something and they decided that's what they're shorting, like GME or AMC or whatever those those like meme stocks were, unless people coordinate to hurt them, they're they're they're, they're not gonna ever move. And like that's kind of the sad thing about a lot of futures contracts is once a hedge fund decides they're going to short you, your company can never move forward. Obviously, AMC, GME, all these things, they were meme stocks. But think about how many other companies must have been suffocated by that sell pressure. And the thing is, it's even worse for something like futures because while, while they have all this sell pressure going on, so people are selling actual shares, other people are making profits on those shares being dumped. So that's how you know it's coordinated because one guy has to dump his shares to move the price down and one guy has to be in a short position to profit off of it. And guess what? When that dip finally hits the floor, who's buying it? The guy who shorted. And then the cycle goes the other way. Bears and bulls. Bull and bear cycles. It's because they're coordinated groups knocking the price down to buy it and push it up. It's a, it's a scheme. It happens in every market. It's just crypto... We have a better chance because there's less of a barrier of entry. And guess what? You could actually get in and make money if you're early. Stocks are way more controlled now. You, like For me, the way I see it is like stocks are too cemented in legacy finance for things to really be fair anymore. Crypto, fine. A lot of rug pulls, a lot of crazy shit going on. It's the Wild West, but no one controls it fully yet. It's not there. So if there's a place to make your money, it's there and it's now. And the way I see it is, yo, $3 trillion market cap compared to a $400 trillion stock market cap. We're like, we're early. And that's why I wanted to talk about futures today on the channel was just more or less to clarify some, some, some standard things and let you know that it's, it's gambling and most of the whole concept is just based off of taking the other person's money. You know, so it's like, it's, it's kind of a dirty system. I'm not a huge fan of futures in general. Oh, my thing went bloop. There you go, a little bit of sound for you guys. Ching, ching. Ching, ching. I made some money. Not really, my, my battery's just low. <laughs> so before my battery dies and you guys have to deal with uh, losing me, I will just wrap up this video and say if you like this kind of content and you stay till the end of this video, definitely like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our Patreon because this is especially the kind of content that you're going to be seeing on it. All the educational stuff, tutorials on how to do things, and like a lot of just good shit that every beginner crypto person should know. And then for the people that are more advanced, like I said, there's going to be higher tiers that allow you to just be in our Discord. And then being in the Discord, like you're going to be shooting the shit with the community and you're going to be catching whatever calls we're making earlier than the people who are gatching it on YouTube. So take care, guys.